Hello and welcome to another video from Sustenance and Covered on the YouTube channel you need to not only survive the current apocalypse, but actually enjoy it. And today we're going to talk a little bit about what I'm about and what my channel's about. In the past I have made videos where I have put rather subtle along with some rather strong hints as to what my channel's about, but apparently there are still some who do not get it. Maybe they just never saw those videos. But anyways, we're going to make this video today so that we all stay on track. And if uh, we need to, every month we'll make another video similar to this. First thing, if you are one of my subscribers, you may sit down and watch my videos and silently enjoy them. Or silently hate them. Doesn't matter to me. However, if you wish to contribute, whether you like them or hate them, you're going to have to contribute reasonably and respectfully and that's not just to me that's also to my other subscribers now everybody should pretty much know this without me telling them because that's nothing more than good manners and uh, people even if they don't practice them still know what good manners are now another thing that we are not going to do on this channel is engage in distractions now many times we'll go off topic and the topic is now this is if you're if you're on my home page right here it says sustenance and covering that's the name of my channel that means food and shelter the very basic needs of humanity right above it or below it it says uh, survival through simple living that means staying alive with the least amount of resources so if you go off of that topic food and shelter staying alive with the least amount of resources then you are off topic this often is allowed because sometimes you have to go off topic to get the point across. However, if you get too far off topic, you are engaging in what's called distractions, and that will not be tolerated. The time that is left remaining for us to survive off the weak, uh, stupid infrastructure of society is quickly fading away, and soon you're going to have to switch over to living on your own infrastructure. So we cannot waste even one second on distractions when there are more important things to do. All right, one of the main distractions that seems to come up a lot and which I'm going to have to put my foot down uh, on very soon is the saving or restoring or preserving of America. Now if you want to engage in any of these activities you may start your own channel or maybe you already have one and do all kinds of videos and comments and such about it on that channel. People who want to live don't need that. They need to come to my channel and hear about food and shelter. So <clears throat> and look if you if that's a, what you choose to do the only reason you're going to choose to do that is because of the 12 year state sponsored indoctrination program known as public education. This is a uh, organization that takes basic historic facts about our founding fathers, twists them, garnishes them, does all kinds of stuff to them to make it seem as though the founding fathers had in mind some kind of utopia that they were going to ensure by law everybody got to take part in. This is known as the American dream. But the fact is it really is a dream. It's a fabrication. A falsehood, a lie, an illusion. America, the America that you got in your head does not exist today, but that's because it never existed. And the fact is it never will exist, so just sit back and enjoy the ride and try to put away the things you need to survive when it totally collapses in the coming future. Now, I'm not saying this to be mean spirit to any individuals or organizations. I'm simply going to present the facts and let you decide for yourself if what I'm saying makes any sense whatsoever. First off, the government of the people, by the people, and for the people never existed. Never was meant to exist. If it had, they would have wrote laws that made it exist. But instead, all the laws they give us, we were simply given the one freedom, and that is to vote. Voting does not create a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. If we were voting on important issues, and if the people actually counted the votes, a little bit of of the people, by the people, and for the people, but for the most part what it would be is of the 51%, by the 51%, and for the 51%, which usually leads to oppression of the 49%. So that would be a government of the majority, 
over the minority. But like I said, we're not voting on issues. We're only voting for people who choose the issues. So, and here's an example, perfect example. Every president in my life, and I'm 48 years old, every president has promised to lower taxes. That's what gets them into office. And within days or weeks, every single one raises taxes. There's no law that says a liar has to stop lying to get elected. So, even though 51% of the country votes, the person they vote for ain't going to do what they want. So it's not of the people, by the people, and for the people. But the fact is, that's not the way it works anyways. Because from the very beginning, women were not given the right to vote. So the reality is, only 25% actually got the right to vote. And they were only able to vote for their controllers. They weren't able to vote for any issues. That's not the end of it. African Americans, the people who were kidnapped and brought to this country to do the physical labor of the country, as well as the Native Americans, the people who were already here when the Europeans conquered it, were not given the right to vote. So that's another 50%. So right now we're talking about down to 12.5% of the U.S. population was given the right to vote. And had it not been for the American genocide, that would actually lead to only 1% of the nation's population getting the right to vote. So as you can see, this is basically the same old, same old as any other country on earth that has a constitution, has a government, has leaders. It is the elitist having the right to control the rest of us. Always been like that. Now if you're a true patriot, your argument is going to be that we got that all straightened out. It is true that by going back and forth to the Supreme Court for hundreds of years, uh, eventually Native Americans, African Americans, and women, after many, many countless horrible struggles, were given the right to vote. But by the time they won that right, there was nothing left to vote for because all of that came around the beginning of the 20th century, and that's when the U.S. government decided to sell itself to these organizations, basically the Federal Reserve. But the Federal Reserve, the IMF, the WTO, and the World Bank are basically all the same organization. And it's not just that they run the United States. They own the United States, as well as every other country on the earth. And any country that does not become a team player and take part in the banker's little scheme is attacked militarily. Or their leaders are simply assassinated. And the assassinations are done by those who are members such as the United States and Great Britain. So really, there is nothing left to vote for. Uh, every candidate in my lifetime who has gotten the opportunity to be President of the United States was a greedy, evil, elitist, wealthy politician slash lawyer. And if the only two choices I got at the polls is two people like that, it is a very, very slim chance that I'm going to spend money on expensive gasoline to drive down to the polls and make that choice. I've had people reason with me that you got to go because you got to choose the lesser of two evils. Well, if you choose the lesser of two evils, you're still choosing evil, and I just won't do that. Won't do it and won't involve myself in discussions about which one is better, a Republican or a Democrat. Not interested. I have no stake in the outcome whatsoever, and guess what? Neither do you. Now, there is an organization, and I'm not trying to pick on anybody in particular. It's called the Tea Party. And I have tried my best to figure out what the Tea Party is about because I keep getting comments about the Tea Party, I keep getting questions about the Tea Party, and I've had several people send me videos about the Tea Party. Gotta admit, I couldn't watch the videos because after about a minute, I was pretty much dozing off. But I did enough research to find out what the mission statement is of a few of these organizations. And uh, for the most part, they want to preserve the liberties that are granted to us by the Constitution. First off, that's impossible because no one really has any liberty. Never did. Basically, these organizations are made up of white middle class Americans. Now, white middle class Americans are not guaranteed the liberties that are in the Constitution. All they're guaranteed is a chance at them. 
Now, if you go to a Tea Party movement event, and I've never been to one, but I've seen, like I said, a few videos, it seems to me that there are no Native Americans, no African Americans, no minorities, no Mexicans, no one like that, because they don't have to put forth any effort to preserve their America. The America of oppression that has controlled them for their whole life is still the same. It's an automatic. No matter what, it's always going to be like that. The problem is, the middle class white people are starting to figure out that in the very near future, if they don't do something, they're going to be forced to live like African Americans and Native Americans. And they don't like that. Not at all. They want to maintain their social status. Well, the solutions they have to these problems are things like tighter controls on Muslim people, uh, building some kind of impenetrable wall between uh, United States and Mexico, uh, taking away social programs such as welfare and food stamps, uh, social security disability. And a lot of why they want to do this is to uh, eliminate the national debt. Well, here's the problem. No matter what you do, you're not going to eliminate the national debt because the national debt is owed to these people. And they own us. The Federal Reserve, in fact, is the only organization, which it is a corporation, it is not part of the federal government, it is the only organization that is allowed to make money. That means print it, make coins, that kind of stuff. How in the world can you pay interest to the Federal Reserve when the only place you can get money is from the Federal Reserve? From the very beginning, this is a system that was doomed to failure for the United States. Are you, I, I'm, just, just so you understand what I'm talking about. When you go to the gas station, to put gas in your car so that you can get to work to make money to buy gas, the act of putting gas in the car raises the national debt. If you make a phone call to somebody, just that simple act raises the national debt. When you buy something from me or sell something to me, that raises the national debt. Every time money changes hands, as little as one penny, a small portion of that adds to the money we owe to the Federal Reserve. It's not going to go away. Building a wall between here and Mexico ain't going to help. It's going to hurt because more money will have to be put into the government's hands to pay the people that are going to build the wall. And guess who's going to build it? Mexicans. So, look, the time we got left, I don't want to, I don't want to have to keep saying this over and over again, but it's awful short. If you want to waste your time on some distractions about saving America, do that on your page. And please don't even comment on that on my page. Now, there's two things getting ready to happen. Either you're going to find some kind of way to reason with me using simple logic to show that I'm wrong, or there's a 99.99999% chance you're going to call me a communist or un-American simply because you have no arguments against what I just said. Well... I have just won round one of this fight. And guess what? Round two is going to be me blocking you, which means that I'll win round two as well. You know why? Because this channel is a democracy. And I am the tyrannical leader of this one. So that's just the way it goes. If you don't want to survive, don't listen to me.